Hey guys, it's Suresh. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning into another video with me today. So today, as you guys can see, we are not at my place, but we are actually on my rooftop. Since on my last Q&A, I gave you guys a little peek into my place and showed you where I film and where I work, I thought today we would come up here to the roof. And of course, the one day that I decided to film, there was like this massive overcast going on. I am very lucky enough to live in a fantastic building here in Brooklyn that has the most amazing views of the city. I can see Manhattan, I can see all the way through to Brooklyn, I can see up to Queens, I can see out to Staten Island, I can see the Statue of Liberty. The views here are 360 degrees and they are so fabulous. I absolutely love living here. Today I have a couple different things that I wanna chat with. Um, the first thing being, I got new glasses. I don't wear them just for fashion, even though that's totally fine if you do. I have worn glasses pretty much all my life. I started when I was like seven, eight years old. Over the past couple of years, I have sort of experimented with the whole buying online thing. There's been a couple of companies that we have seen come and go over the years that sort of revolutionized the whole concept of e-commerce for glasses, but um, I'm one of those people that buy everything online. I like hate going into the store. I don't like to be bothered when I'm shopping. I don't like to be pressured into buying something I don't want to buy. And I feel like I also just hate dealing with moody salespeople. So I'm super excited today to talk to you guys about where I got these glasses and I also have a special offer for you. So I was recently approached by a company called Firmu. If you guys look them up online, um, they're quite popular in the blogosphere. A lot of people have done reviews about them. Firmu actually reached out to me a while back and asked if I wanted a pair of glasses. Um, I went to the site, took a look, shopped for about an hour or so. Um, and was able to virtually try a couple of things on. Um, and if you guys have never shopped for glasses online before, I'm telling you, it's like a whole different experience and you have to try it. It's actually really fun. I chose these because I wanted something sort of under the radar and low profile. The pair that I chose that I'm wearing right now, I have to say I've worn them for about a week now and I absolutely love them. They are, first and foremost, so freaking lightweight. I can barely feel them on. And because the rims are clear, I don't feel like I have this weird, like, dark thing in my field of vision. Do you know what I mean? I opted to go with these guys also because the arm is really, really low profile and really skinny and almost, like, not there. I like gold because it complements my skin better than silver does. And um, I also chose the plastic nose pads instead of the little um, actual pads because I don't like the impression the little plastic pl uh, pads leave on my nose after a while. Ugh. Check down below in the description box. I have the exact style model of these ones along with a special deal for you guys. If you guys buy one, you get the second one for free. And let me tell you, you guys, these are really affordable glasses. They're not super expensive. They're not super bougie. Although they look quite fantastic. Um, they're quite disposable if you wanted them to be and my favorite thing about the whole thing is you know I've bought designer glasses before I have a bunch of pairs of really fancy ones um, even though I really just wear them at night and on the weekends or if I'm having like you know a weird contact day and sometimes they can get really cumbersome and I feel really guilty always about spending you know three four five hundred dollars on a pair of glasses I have to say for the price that these are I don't feel bad about sitting on them or losing them you know <laughs> The one other thing I wanted to say about these also is um, it took me a couple of days to readjust my vision to them as I think with all new glasses but I absolutely really really love that within like two days I was back on um, I wasn't having any sort of headaches or vision problems and it's great because I can see the computer really well without there being a reflection or a glare and these frames actually have an anti-glare um, coating on them and they are also like quite thin so I did choose those options when I was checking out and I have to say you guys it's freaking amazing like even when I'm taking a selfie with it even when I have a bright light shining in my face and I'm like facetiming someone I don't see a reflection it's pretty freaking amazing so if you guys are in the market for a new pair of glasses, um, whether it be for cosmetic purposes or you actually need them, I strongly recommend you to go check out Firmu.com. All the information is down below in the description box and make sure you guys take advantage of that special offer. I highly, highly recommend them. I really am enjoying these glasses and uh, I'm pretty much going to be uh, placing orders for like five or six more pairs because why the hell not, right? <laughs> On to today's Q&A. Now, over the 
past couple of months, um, you guys have been sending me all sorts of fun questions and I have received so many interesting questions. Many of the questions that I have gotten have all revolved around Barbie, which is totally fine. So I thought today I would sit down with you guys and go through some of the questions that you had. I'm so excited that you guys tune into me every week. Thank you so much for helping me grow this amazing community. I feel like we've grown this a place here that's safe, that's fun, um, that's interactive. I love seeing all of you guys interact with each other on my on my comment feed. That's so fun to watch. And I also love that when one of you guys has a question, you know, one of you other guys will like jump in and leave answers and suggestions. I love that. That's freaking amazing. And kudos to all of you for coming and hanging out with me every Thursday. So without further ado, let's get to some questions. Question number one, what is your holy grail doll? Oh my God. I have so many freaking holy grail dolls, you guys. I can't even tell you, but one that I am particularly really really obsessed with because I love Chanel so much is preferably pink um, I feel like I am always always checking out various websites trying to find her trying to see where um, I could track one down question number two what are some of the past dolls that you are missing toujours couture um, stolen magic um, Maria Therese Bard the bride Lisette I love that long bluish um, aqua-ish gown oh my god like the entire Russian collection oh my god those girls were so freaking amazing and Nikolai was so hot <laughs> the soiree was really beautiful I loved both the pink and the blue and those girls with the big gowns like Provençal like Dahlia in the pink oh my god I love in the pink I feel like I'm always stalking her online too I would say she's definitely one of my holy grail dolls and even Violette I thought Violette was so beautiful um, love the big gowns on those girls so yeah I mean there's a whole bunch of dolls that I missed um, in recent collections there are non silkstone dolls as well for example some of the blondes dolls the blondes um, diamond doll I think she is with the silver bustier oh so obsessed with her also on my wish list also one that I frequently um, am uh, stalking online <laughs> question number three what winter holiday do you celebrate for example Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa Diwali winter solstice or any other holiday um, <laughs> I celebrate all of those uh, my family and I are Buddhist um, so a part of being a good Buddhist is celebrating everyone else's holidays with them. The only major Buddhist holiday that we have worldwide is Vesak, which is the birth and passing of the Buddha. He was born and passed on the same day. So outside of that, yeah, I mean, I just kind of celebrate whatever is happening. Um, here in New York, there are no shortage of celebrations and I have friends that span all religions, all ethnic backgrounds. Um, so yeah, I just celebrate everything with everyone. Why not? Question number four, based on this year's reviews, what are the strongest points you believe Barbie as a product and brand should reinforce? And what are its weakest points that it should address? Oh my God, a loaded question. I also love that you guys ask me these super official questions, like I'm a, a Mattel employee. Um, thank you for believing in me and trusting in me. The collaborations, we just saw the Hello Kitty doll drop. We saw the um, third Andy Warhol doll come out. And yeah, I really enjoyed seeing the pop culture um, and Barbie brand mixed together. So I would say um, those are some of their strongest points. In terms of weakest points, I would say the bridge between collector and playline just seems to be getting more and more um, blurred. I feel like a lot of the dolls that I'm seeing on the collector side of the website just look so playline to me. I feel like many of us collectors, we look to these dolls as an escape, as a way to sort of live out um, a fashion fantasy, at least for me it is. So when I see these, uh, these dolls looking just so basic, like they're from a college campus or from you know some tour of club somewhere, it's like, that's just not Barbie. That's not what I believe the Barbie brand is about. To help us justify the price points because they're expensive. The price points seem to be going up, but the quality seems to be going down. The quality of the garments just has to, has to get better and um, that I think is the biggest weak point. Question number what, five, this is five. Um, Little Miss Revlon, Jill and Jeff Vogue, Suzette and Bob dolls from the pre-1950s Barbie era. What do you think they say about fashion compared to Barbie? I would say the biggest point of difference between those dolls and Barbie is that those dolls were sort of all modeled after children. They look very young, they look like children. So even though they have fashions that they're wearing, 
um, I feel like they're interpreted almost in a childlike way or on a child's body um, or almost more costume like if that makes sense to me what Barbie represents is a more sophisticated and grown-up point of view um, and I think that's what Barbie has kind of brought to the doll and fashion doll world altogether. She's shown us what grown-up fashion looks like and I think what those dolls before her were doing was sort of mixing fashion and baby doll into kind of one world, at least in my opinion. Question number six. Uh, many say that the quality of Barbie collector and playline has diminished. What is your opinion about this? Yes, it has diminished. I don't really buy any playline dolls. Uh, yeah, I don't think I do at all. But whenever I am at a store, I try to look at them and sort of gauge, you know, what's happening in that world. And oh my God, the quality has dropped so much. It's really sad to see. Um, and collector level, yeah, the quality has definitely dropped. That's not even a question. Um, and it's sad. It's, it's really sad because Mattel's a huge company and I feel that they really could um, improve upon the quality if they wanted to, but you know, it's a whole other story. Question number seven. Um, the satisfaction really just, or the dissatisfaction just expresses how high the expectations are from an iconic brand. What has mass production and inflation have to do with it? Um, Wow, that's a loaded question. Publicly traded companies like Mattel are multi-million dollar conglomerates. They're huge, huge brands, multi-billion dollar even, really. Um, and to them, the bottom line, the bottom dollar has a lot to do with how they operate. Working in the corporate world myself and seeing how much it takes to run a business um, and what businesses thrive on and develop from has kind of helped me understand what Mattel must be thinking. They're not really looking, you know, at their profit and loss statements and, and thinking like, ooh, we have to do something super fetch for the next collector series. They're thinking like, how can we cut costs? How can we be efficient in what we have? How can we cut, you know, more dollars here, more dollars there? I think there's just a lot of different components that go into the loss of quality at a big company like Mattel. But yeah, I mean, inflation does have something to do with it. Um, the global economy has something to do with it. The way that toys and the future of toys is, you know, important to think about because a lot of kids and non-kids don't buy toys anymore. Everything's digital now. Everything happens online. Everything is a video game. There is a way that Mattel um, could probably improve upon these things if they wanted to. But at the end of the day, these are, you know, mass people companies with lots and lots of people involved and I don't know that it's going to be a change that we'll see overnight even though I think the best thing that we can do is be vocal about our dislikes be vocal about what we want to see changed question number uh, what is this eight I think yeah would you ever do a gown sewing tutorial for dolls um sure I guess I'll try to do a tutorial for you guys sometime I do have a couple of dresses that I'm planning to create and I'll see if I can you know set the camera up and kind of go along the process I think my thing is like whenever I start creating something I just kind of lose myself to the moment and I try not to process it too much and I try not to be like oh let me go set up the camera oh let me go do this because when I do I find that the creativity kind of is you know fleeting and, and flies away I'm not a designer that starts with a sketch I kind of just pick up fabric and just let it do its thing so anyway I know that's not really what you guys want to hear but I will try question number nine what is your ultimate wish list on Silkstone Barbies um I think they go this goes back to an earlier question there's just so many freaking Silkstones that I wish I had there's so many Silkstones that I want there's no one particular Silkstone that I love I think preferably pink is one that's you know at the top of my wish list right now um, that wish list seems to change from you know month to month or season to season and question number 10 the last question how many bow ties do you have <laughs> I think I have at this point probably well over a hundred bow ties um, and I have given some away I have donated a few I've gifted a few and uh, I continue to have more because every time I, I design a new collection um, all the prototypes that come in from the factory I end up wearing and most of the time they get acquired into my wardrobe so yeah at this point I'm sure 
maybe like 125, 130, 150, I don't know. It's into the hundreds. <laughs> That's it for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the Q&A. I hope you enjoyed our little chat about classes. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that you learned something. Please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit that little bell icon after the subscribe button. That way you guys are notified every Thursday when I upload a new video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. I am at Suresh NY. That's generally where I post all my updates. Until I see you guys again, I am going to enjoy the view up here and uh, perhaps just open up a bottle of wine. Wherever you guys are in the world, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Big hugs and kisses from me here in New York. Mwah. And I'll see you guys again next Thursday for another video. Okay, bye.